The views and opinions expressed in Media Litter Sandwich do not reflect on the views of the network, station, studio, website, sponsors, guests, hosts themselves, anyone or anything else associated or even not associated with this podcast. Maybe not even the person that said them. In other words, do your own research and do not sue anyone over what is said on this show. Welcome to Media Litter Sandwich. This is, I'm Toden from Toden.com and of course MediaLittersandwich.com. I'm talking to creators, talking to all sorts of things, anything to do with media. And today I'm here with Josh. Josh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, thank you for having me, sir. My name is Josh Bauer. Some people know me as J. Bauer Art. I am an artist based in Orlando, Florida. I do uh, creative paintings of uh, pop culture icons, comic book heroes, villains, uh, my own line of uh, fairies, and some abstract work here and there. Really cool. It's re- you do a lot of stuff. And I got to thank you for coming on here, not once, but twice. <laughs> uh, we tried to record this last week. And I don't know what happened. It didn't work out. And then throughout the week, I had issues with microphones on my computer, which uh, I got to thank my roommate for letting me his MacBook, which I got to talk to him about using uh, Safari on his MacBook. That's a little weird. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, it (laughs) works. This is one thing after another, like I uh, got kicked out of the studio this week uh, that nothing we did, you know, when you have a paying client, you're going to go for the paying client that's probably paying a whole lot more than I'm oh, paying. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everyone that, that does a show during the week got, got kicked out, uh, oh, which wow. is fine. Uh, yeah. We'll be back in the Foundation Hotel, uh, the Foundation Studio next week uh, with some really cool guests. I have a lot of guests coming up, uh, including someone or a group that you're familiar with, Kitchen Killers. Yes, yes. The Kitchen Killers, a very talented acoustic duo that uh, I've been working with for the past uh, six months or more now. How you been working with them? So what I do with them is uh, they brought me on late last year to join in and be um, uh, part sponsor. And then I'm also part of the show every so often. So uh, once a month, I get with the guys because what they do is they do a uh, Friday night show every Friday night live at 905. They uh, play music. They play their own original uh, art. own original artwork they play artwork <laughs> no they play their own original uh, i'm gonna play the, i'm gonna play the paintbrush today i'm gonna i'm gonna play the roller the roller is my best instrument yes i, I finally got it tuned it works perfectly <laughs> just take the paintbrush beat it on a metal surface they call me bob ross because i beat the devil out of it <laughs> Well, yeah, they play uh, original music, uh, their own original music, and then they also do acoustic covers of uh, several different uh, bands and things of that nature. They do an hour show, uh, and they go to people's kitchens. They invade their kitchens, and they play live on Facebook Live from these fans and different people's kitchens. Uh, the way the how I come in is I will be set up behind them with a canvas, and I will paint a uh, whatever I'm in the mood for that that evening. Um, and I have an hour, which is their usual show time run. I have an hour to create whatever I'm working on. So I've done a mix of, um, Doc Ock and Spider-Man, uh, which is sitting back here for those watching the audio version, but it's uh, a long canvas with uh, Spider-Man down below and Doc Ock's arms coming up behind him. I've done that. I've done like a snow, like a snowman family for the holidays with like a pretty night sky and snow falling. Family friendly snowman family? Are we talking about snowman? Like like uh, <laughs> um, one artist I had on, I don't know if I showed this artwork, but one of favorite pieces of art, <clears throat> artwork um, is a bunch of teddy bears bending over uh, cupcakes that have candles in them. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> no, my next year I'm buying. Um, I'm buying my nephew's kids that print it, framing <laughs> it. I swear that this year I bought them. Um, same artist, uh, uh, Mark. Um, Mark Blur. I bought a print from him for 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 the for the little tyke for the nursery. Was um, I think it was. Monkeys riding on cats with swords. <laughs> Interesting. 
Interesting. No, my stuff is all family friendly. Yeah, I, all my okay. stuff is always family friendly for the most part. But especially when I'm with working with the Kitchen Killers, uh, they mm-hmm. like to keep the show PG. Uh, so you know, we throw in our little jokes over in there, kind of like how Disney does. That will fly over kids' heads and things like that, and the adults will chuckle about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it usually gets worse when I show up. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the troublemaker of the group. So uh, usually, if something just sounds slightly dirty, I make sure to point it out. Um, uh, and cause as much trouble as I can. But yeah, I, I set up behind the guys and do, you know, do my thing. Uh, sometimes I get it done within, like the very first time I painted with them, I created a um, Jack Skellington painting in 48 minutes. Uh, other times I have to make them make the show go longer. We did a, uh, a show with um, our friends, The Hanging with Web Show uh, down in Melbourne, and it was for Cosplay Michael's birthday. And I was painting a actual person. I was p- painting the cosplayer, Michael, uh, as the Joker. So that one took a little bit longer because uh, I had to do like three coats of the purple. It was really rough. So we're like going and I'm still painting. And they're like starting to wrap up. And luckily, Billy's mom was paying attention on the live feed. She goes, you need to keep going because the artist behind you is not finished. I'm like, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> the least somebody's paying attention. Uh, so yeah, usually when I pop in, the show goes a little bit longer because I've gotten pretty good at getting close to the hour, but sometimes I got to make them go a little bit over. So uh, that puts a lot of pressure on you. How do you handle that pressure? Uh, a lot of twitching. <laughs> playing with spinners. Yeah, playing with spinners. Uh, I, I always... I, I, <laughs> audio version, different from the video version. He's holding an orange spinner in his hand. I did catch that. Yes, yes. I've uh, The last couple of weeks, my hands are always fidgety. Uh, I'm all, I, I am an artist, so my hands and my mind is always doing something. So the last couple of times I've done interviews or even when I'm doing my Artist Weekly Update on YouTube... My hands have been very fidgety, so I've been playing with the uh, a spinner that I got for free just to keep the hands, uh, right. you know, doing something. Um, I just thought it was interesting. Your whole playing with a spinner, and behind you the turtles, and uh, one of my favorite local vendors who used to be a sponsor, who may sponsor us again, Turtle mm-hmm. Trinkets, uh, still sells a bunch of really cool spinners, but they sell necklaces and a ton of other stuff. If you're ever on, check them out on Facebook, or I think they <laughs> may have a Netsy shop now too. If you look up Turtle Trinkets, nice. Dave, you better uh, give me at least a buck for this. <laughs> I just bought him MC Hammer tickets. I I, I think he could. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the uh, so like the the first time I did I painted with the guys was uh, really nerve wracking because uh, I've been doing I've been doing some kind of art since I was a kid. Uh, I've been doing it this semi professional deal uh, for six to seven years now, uh, going to the conventions, different events. Mm-hmm. And then I, like I said, I started the live painting with the guys six months ago. I never liked people watching me paint. I still have a little bit of trouble with it. It's uh, when we get into bigger groups or houses that are full of more people, it does get a little, little more nerve wracking. Um, so the build up to it is always uh, the worst. You know, like the the Halloween special that we did. You know, the very first time. That full hour, I was kind of freaking out. You know, just talking to people, trying to loosen my nerves and all that. Or like uh, a few weeks ago, I live painted for the first time on stage at an event called Sci-Fi Barto in Barto, Florida. Uh, and I was really nervous on that one because I was on stage in front of tons of people. Um, so the whole buildup beforehand is crazy. It's, you know, trying just to breathe, to relax and, and just focus on what I'm going to do. But once I get on and start working on the canvas, everything shuts off around me. Um, the the really the only way I pay attention to anybody is like if I'm doing the show with the guys or or anybody that's in front of me um I make sure to listen to them because you you they want the show interactive and we always pick on each other cause trouble and mm-hmm. just you know make the show even more uh so them I will listen to but everything else I shut off like my wife will tell me things that happened after my live painting sessions she'd go oh well this happened i'm like when did that happen she goes what do you mean when did that happen like i'm not paying attention because number one my back's towards everybody i'm looking at the canvas so you know the camera sees my back and Mm -hmm. the canvas i don't see anything else so i have no idea what's going on and my wife just goes you really just shut everybody off i go i have to if i actually pay attention to who's all behind me i'll get too nervous and and lose my cool uh even we did um I live painted with a um, 
at an album release party a few weeks back, uh, Landon Nolan, very talented young musician coming up here in Florida. And um, I just, I was so focused on painting, even because my wife was doing a live stream for me, even the people noticed because like (laughs) Kayla would go say something to me or my mom would say something to me and I go, what? (laughs) And they're like, wow, he's really intense. And that's, it just, I shut everything off and I'm able to just breathe and do my thing. Oh man, they got a lot of startle you. People go up to you right behind you going, are you sure you're using that color? Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> far, <Spell> stuff over. <laughs> <laughs> so far, everybody's been very cool. There's not been anybody mm-hmm. like, oh, should you be doing this? Oh, sh-. Most of the time I'm giving compliments when the painting still looks like crap. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, at the, at the album release party, uh, a lot of Landon's family and friends were all there and they would come up and they're like, I'm just starting, just getting the white and the, uh, the purple on. Cause it was a crow on a, uh, red square, uh, sitting on a, uh, stopwatch or not a stopwatch, like a clock watch shaped like a heart. And then it had the, uh, album name on it and everything. So I'm just getting started. The first like 10, 15 minutes of it, getting the white and purple in there and doing the extra coats. It looks like a damn mess. <laughs> it really does. And uh, like people were coming up, oh my God, it looks so amazing. It looks so great. I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> come back and come back like the last 10 minutes and then come say that. But I, I get a lot of people where it's just, it's in the middle of it and it looks okay, but it's nowhere near close to being done. So people are like, it looks amazing. I'm like, just wait until it's done. <laughs> They're impressed because they don't believe they can do that themselves. Yeah. And I think that's really what it is. And I get that a lot. And there's, there's, I, I'm always fighting with that. Uh, I, I have a very dark sense of humor and I don't take compliments that, that well, especially with art pieces. So people will come up, Oh, this looks great. That looks amazing. That came really well. And I'll, you know, talk some stuff about it. And I never act like it's that great. Cause I'm the artist and can always find what's wrong with it but everybody else gets mad at me they're like it looks great i'm like yeah 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 whatever <laughs> <laughs> uh, that always brings up the age-old question is when do you think you're done with a, a project ah uh, yeah that's always a fun question i actually just finished uh the harley quinn behind me um and when the last time we recorded i was think i was only halfway done when we were recording yeah i thought she was i didn't think she was sitting on a park bench i thought she was sitting on a toilet (laughs) yes 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 so she's actually sitting in a diner uh oh okay okay now to me it looks like a park bench because i just see uh video versions different than the audio version what i see behind her it looks like boards of wood behind her so i assumed it was uh, a park bench yeah it definitely could look like that it's oh now i can see the batman is is on a table yeah his shadow's on the table and it's like she's uh she's broken some windows carved her name and it looks like she caused some trouble because you never know with harley if she's a good guy at the moment or a bad guy um the rebirth harley i think is a little bit more on the good guy side uh but i wanted to look like she caused some chaos in a gotham diner uh (laughs) and then uh batman caught her in the middle of it uh, but this was one of those pieces that I kept working, kept working, kept working. And I, I was pretty sure I was done. And I do this with most paintings. I will look at my wife. I'll go to my wife or my mom and go, is it done? <laughs> you know, I'll kind of get their first reaction of it. Cause most of the time they're not seeing it, mm-hmm. uh, through the whole time. Cause they're off doing their own thing. So I'll walk up to them and have them look at it and d- gauge it on their reaction. Number one. And then other times they'll just tell me, you need to do a little bit more or you need to stop because there's times where I'll just go too far and I'll mess it all up. Uh, just put too much onto it. But even when I'm live painting at different events, uh, my, my wife is usually with me. So we're like going and going and going and you can catch me on the camera. I'll look at her and kind of go, eh, <laughs> you know, kind of <laughs> like, what do you think? And she'll go, she'll give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And most of the time it's thumbs up. She's like, just, you're done. You're good. It's time to go home. Yeah. It's time to go home. <laughs> So yeah, it's, uh, sometimes I, I will feel that like, okay, I feel good. I'm done Mm -hmm. with it. Other times, a lot of the times I have to ask somebody, I'll even ask my fans on Facebook. I'll post it up on, uh, on my Instagram, uh, or my Facebook J Bauer art and go, what do you guys think? Is it done? Does it need more? And, And my fans, I have like a few good hardcore fans that have been following my work for years now. And they'll be honest with me. Oh, dude, you got to do something with here or something with here or just doesn't just do a little bit more because it doesn't look just right. Mm-hmm. Or they'll go, you're done. Go home. 
before you do a live painting, uh, do you like, like, do you practice first? Like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Um, does this take an hour? Let me go ahead and paint a practice one. That way you know what you're doing in advance or do you just kind of wing it? So most of the time it is winging it. Um, the, I can never paint the same thing well twice. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the two paintings you see behind me, um, I could probably recreate them, but I don't know if they would look good as good as the first time. Uh, I'm not a repeat person. So going and trying to do a full practice run, uh, would probably mess me up more than going just, um, cold turkey or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I do draw stuff out though. Like, so the very first one I did with, um, Jack Skellington, I totally drew out Jack. So he was ready to go and then put white, uh, gesso, which is like a, a white paint, but it, uh, tightens the canvas a little bit more and basically makes the canvas ready to paint. Um, I've so, watched Bob Ross. You always paint it white first. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So or black. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, I do draw stuff out. I'll do certain things first. So like, um, actually I have one sitting right here. This is for the visual people only. So I painted this canvas right before we started recording. I'm trying to make it look like a piece of wood because this painting is uh, going to be done this Friday night with the Kitchen Killers, uh, March 15th. I'll be, we're having a St. Patrick's Day episode here at my house. The Kitchen Killers are coming, the mad scientists, the, uh, the cook, the chef that works with them are coming. And we're going to have a big uh, event. So this video will probably be out the following Monday. <laughs> uh, go back and watch it later. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can see what he's talking about right now. Pulling up. Go side by side. Hey. Yeah. yeah um, I will be sharing it on my feed, of course. And then the Kitchen Killers will be sharing it on their feed as well. Uh, but, yeah. So I'll do – if it's something that's going to take a while to dry, like uh, that piece there, to try to make it look like wood, I'm preparing it beforehand. Uh, there's another one. The snowman family I did, I actually did the the night sky beforehand because that takes a little bit of time and a lot of paint to go over top of each other to get that nice skyline look. Um, so there are some where I go in a little bit beforehand, get a little bit started, and then finish it up on camera. Other times I just set a blank canvas on there or a pre-drawn canvas and then start right when the camera starts rolling. Wow. How do you figure out that's only going to take you an hour or in your case, hour, 15 minutes, hour okay. and a half all night or kitchen killers just keep going. Redo your set. It's fine. <laughs> um, I've, I've gotten uh, a little bit good at gauging what I can do or I just start going a little bit faster and it gets a little bit messier. Like when I was working on the cosplay Michael Joker painting, that one took an hour and 20 minutes, almost more because of having to redo the purple so mm-hmm. much. So that was like a lesson learned one. Uh, I usually gauge it by the, the size canvas. So I usually do a 12 by 24 inch canvas. Um, mm-hmm. Lately, I've been doing more of the 12 by 36 inch canvases, which I can get close to an hour and some. It, it goes over a little bit. And I usually just say, hey, you get more music with the guys when I'm around. <laughs> um, but I know... I don't make it super detailed. Uh, It's a little bit looser of a style. Um, You know, I I know it's hard to see Harley, especially for uh, people that are only listening, but Harley's very detailed. Uh, Lots of little details into it, lots of little brushes, uh, going over stuff over and over again. That took about 30 hours in total to make. Um, So what you're going to get in this hour-long painting session or an hour and 20, whatever it is, is a bit messy, a bit crazy. And then sometimes... If it doesn't sell while, because sometimes uh, the canvases have sold while we're uh, doing the show. I've had people like, I want this. I, I'll buy it. You know, I'll take it. Uh, other times, if I get to take it home with me, I go home and clean it up a little bit. I t- add a little bit of touches here and there. I actually have one uh, sitting behind me of Batman and Jack the Ripper that I did at Sci-Fi Barco. I still have to clean that one up. I just haven't had a good idea for it yet. Um, but just getting the paint looking a little bit better, clean up the edges and stuff like that. Cool. Um, at this time, I would like to remind people they could always listen to the podcast on a lot of different apps, uh, including Spotify, 
Podbean, uh, you know, anywhere if we're not on it. If you search Media Letter Sandwich, you can find the podcast. Let me know. I'll see if I could get on there. Uh, it just happened to me the other day where someone's like, oh, I want to subscribe to you. Uh, I saw uh, I saw it on your website, but uh, I go to my podcast app, didn't have it on there. I was able to get it up on there like in 15 seconds. Sometimes I can do that depending on which app it is. Or you could always listen to it on WDVR whenever we have happen to be up there apparently we're not on there yet but i am assured we'll be back on wdvr every tuesday night at 7 p.m eastern uh by the end of march uh, i just talked to the guy that runs it bo he's been really busy he's trying to resyndicate several shows on there it's just a one-man show everything on that radio station so he's working on it we'll probably get back up weekly uh by the end of march uh, so if you're watching this in the future, yeah, we've always been on WDVR. <laughs> no, no overlap or mess ups ever. Uh, <laughs> that is, of course, live stream on WDVR, which I will try to be on the chat room. Um, I say try because we'll be on as I'm leaving the studio uh, after recording the newer episodes. But I'll try, if anything, I'll be able to look at the chat room uh, as I leave and keep an eye on it at some point. So. That's always fun. So always check out WDVR. They have a lot of cool shows on it. They have some new stuff coming up. So, if you know, Dysfunctional Veterans, it's in the title. You know it's going to be weird. Um, <laughs> you know it's always going to be something. Which is also, by the way, that pause it would be a great spot for a sponsor if anyone wants to sponsor the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so you're doing uh, live drawings. I during concerts, during, you know, during Kitchen Killers on, on Facebook once mm-hmm. a month or so, you can check out Kitchen Killers for that. What else are you doing? Are you also doing uh, like comic book stuff or are you just sticking to the cons? Um, just sticking to the conventions as at the moment. Um, and then I'm actually trying to get into, um, I don't know what you would call it, like almost like residencies at different um, venues and stuff. So uh, I've been working with Landon Nolan and his family quite a bit. So I, w- I just got booked um, uh, last week to do be part of a charity event with them. Uh, I want to say April. I can't remember. Off the top of my I think I have it somewhere. Uh, uh, April 27th, I'm going to be hanging out with Landon and his family. They asked me to come and live paint. And uh, the fundraiser is to help a uh, local Oviedo officer, I believe. He's Oviedo, a police officer who's been uh, diagnosed with cancer. Um, they're trying to raise some funds for him and uh, help out him and his family as much as we can. So uh, Landon and his family asked if I'd be willing to come out, uh, live paint, and then donate the painting to uh, auction it off live. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, I think I'm going to do, I do these, they wanted to do something with that could be with the police or something. So the one idea was doing a, uh, a painting of the like American flag, but with the uh, police colors. So it's got that one blue stripe through it. Right. I, I wasn't feeling that one because sometimes people with the American flag are a little twitchy and then, uh, you can only do so much with an American flag. So I came up with the idea. I do these trees. Um, they're kind of look like or- Oriental, um, cherry blossom trees, but they're my own style. Uh, they come out really cool. So I'm going to do one of those in the blue that it stands for police officers. So you're getting a mix of my art and what I really like to do. Plus the police officer mix in tie in. Uh, so I'm doing stuff like that, getting hooked up with people where I can help with different charities. Uh, I may be doing another, like, I guess a gala in the, uh, fall, um, to help raise money for, uh, fighting diabetes for children. Um, and then different, uh, companies like, uh, my friends, uh, Foxwood wine company down in Melbourne, they're, uh, getting into a new location and they want me to come down. Uh, I've been talking to them coming down once a month, like uh, Saturday or Sunday and live painting and hanging out for the day. Uh, So I'm kind of trying to do more of that kind of stuff than the convention stuff, but I'm still going to be at events like Tampa Bay Comic Con uh, here in August. Yeah, Tampa Bay is cool. I've had a movie actually play there once. Uh, Yeah, the organizers are really cool too. They, I believe they're the same ones that put on uh, uh, a lot of different conventions, including now Michigan uh, Comic Con or what do they call it now? Because they don't call it Comic Con anymore. Uh, they still call them Comic Con. Okay, so they haven't yeah, changed their name yet. I know a lot of them yeah. change their names. 
Yeah, the the all those or uh, comic every, conventions, excuse me. And maybe they call them comic conventions, but yeah, they they still do the the same name. But I love Tampa Bay Comic Con. I've been going there for like I think this is going to be my fourth year in a row. Um, it, Tampa, I love heading down to that area of Tampa, and then that convention's always fun. I've got a good little following that come out, and then I'm teaming up with the Kitchen Killers uh, to try to change up. The, the way we do things a little bit more. Uh, the killers want to get more into the comics, comic convention scene to meet new people. Mm-hmm. And then I want to be able to, some of the shows have been a little interesting for me. They haven't worked out exactly the way I've been wanting them to. So I figured if we team up, we can get more people seeing each other and kind of play off each other and maybe even do some live shows there at the booth. Uh, and hopefully some good big things will come out of all that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else can hear it, but my roommates are apparently having a, a debate of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea if it's coming through the microphone or not, but it's always interesting. Uh, I can't wait to get back into the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. I bet. Uh, anything else you'd like to shout out before we go to the next part, which is the Toad and Reads part, which I have uh, pre-selected a couple cool things to read the comments from. Awesome. Uh, yeah, the only thing I would uh, shoot out there is I, I'm also on YouTube. So if you actually want to see me create some of these pieces, just like the Harley Quinn that we've been talking about, uh, that one will be out as of this show comes out. Uh, just search J Bauer Art, all one word, on YouTube, and you can find me. I do uh, time-lapse videos of all my paintings, or as many as I can. I also do um, every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, I go live on YouTube and do my Artist Weekly update. I chat about what's happened in the past week, the shenanigans I've gotten into, uh, you know, show some work in progress stuff, some stuff I finished, and then what I'm going to get into the next month, week, and so often. So, uh, yeah, words are hard today. <laughs> but yeah, just check me out on YouTube, uh, J. Bauer Art. J. Bauer Art, not to be confused with Jack Bauer or his son, Josh Bauer, which exactly. I'm sure you can relate to. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> that was that was bad i i apologize for that that was <laughs> that was pretty bad speaking of a pretty well i don't know um so i pulled up two trailers which we're not going to watch the trailers i just i just want to read the comments um okay. now you just saw a movie i did not see yet um i believe yesterday you saw yes. I want to say Miss Marvel so bad because I read Miss <laughs> because that's why I used to read. I used to read Miss Marvel. I right the Captain Marvel or Captain Marvel is not Carol Danvers in my book. She's always right, right. Miss Marvel or Warbird. But yeah, I did see it yesterday and uh, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a great movie, mm-hmm. uh, very nicely done. I've heard all the different stuff. You know, some people absolutely love it. Other people were whining about it for whatever reason. Um, I loved it on a variety of reasons, but one of the best things was the relationship between um, Fury and uh, Captain Marvel. Their banter, it's like almost a little bit like a buddy cop movie, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, um, it's, it's very interesting. You get a very young version of Fury that you normally don't see or, or that we haven't seen, um, and I really liked it a lot. It was it was one of those movies you got done with, and you're going, yeah, that was pretty cool. I, I really dug that. I, I look forward to seeing more of her in throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I always thought Brie Larson wasn't the best uh, person for it. When I heard the casting, I was hoping it would have been uh, Gwendolyn Christie, I believe her name is, from uh, Game of Thrones, played Brienne of Tar. Uh, mm-hmm. And she's also as Captain Phantom or Fant- whatever from uh, the newer Star Wars movies. I always thought it would be like someone that has a lot more harder look to her. Or like even my nephew made the suggestion, I wish they would have casting an MMM. MMA fighter like Ronda Rosie or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read some of these comments that we're finding here. Because one of the things I've noticed, and this comment uh, calls it straight out, is uh, many trolls have not, uh, many trolls have not and have no intention to ever see the movie. Sad that some have taken a comment encouraging diversity and twisted it to something that has, that it is not and are now trolling this movie. This movie. Uh, was actually great. Brie Larson rocked the role of Captain Marvel, and she is definitely Marvel's superwoman. Um, 
uh, basically, that's that's also commenting on Brie Larson's comments of discur- uh, not liking her, uh, her her cast due to their uh, gender and race, um, mm-hmm. saying that she was surrounded by too many white male and she wanted a more diverse crew. You can say whatever you want to that, but I, you know, you don't, you know, when you're promoting a movie, it's probably best that you don't try to encourage race baiting. Um, <laughs> I that's me. Yeah. I I think you were hired to do a role and you shouldn't be trying to race bait anybody for anything. Um does it cuz why'd you take this role then? Why didn't you encourage them to uh do a race swap on Captain Marvel? Maybe get somebody that looks more like the role just happens to be a different race. Yeah, to me Brie Larson looks nothing than what Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel should look like. Um but that's beside the point. <laughs> Uh, some funny pictures we got here. We have a parody picture of a weekend at Bernie's where Captain Marvel's uh, Bernie, which is two people carrying around a dead body. <laughs> uh, we got loved it. Going to get, I did not pre-read these, by the way. Gotcha. I just figured this. Would oh, be- there's a bad one. There you go. What do we have? Go, this movie is ter- was terrible. I wanted to like it, but I could not. Bad acting from the lead leading actress, horrible ending, and the worst Marvel movie to this date. Did you ever see the Hulk with uh, Norton in it? <laughs> that, I, I thought this, the one with Norton was better than the one uh, before him. I thought yeah. that Hulk was horrible. I was kept waiting for like the comic book badness to stop with like the weird panel oh, yeah. shifting that was terrible but i mean and it did before, stop <laughs> yeah yeah but even like uh that the the hulk that's technically in the marvel universe i i didn't even like that one that much uh that one felt like a real throwaway of a movie um and i just i don't understand it with this one i, I thought it was very good i don't understand the hate yeah i mean i've then again, I like Howard the Duck. What do I know? <laughs> to for a movie to be—I mean, I don't know if people include Howard the Duck with uh, Marvel mm-hmm. movies, or they're just some of the CMU because Marvel's made some really bad movies before the CMU. Oh yeah, I do like the Dolph Lundgren Punisher, though. I don't care. I did like that one too. That was a really good one. Mm-hmm. And that was a very realistic one too. Uh, you know, the MCU has oh, yeah. gotten more without that realistic edge. Take that, trolls! <laughs> uh, we got take the up. Spoiler alert for Endgame: Goose is the one who defeats Thanos. I <laughs> from Top Gun. Okay. <laughs> I thought. I thought. Oh, be, from the AD. So yeah, sure. They bring Goose back. With uh, Maverick, and they and yep. they do some. He was part of the snap. Little did you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I'm looking to see if there's any really. There's no other competitors at the moment. That's why this was good. Is there really nothing else in the movie theater worth seeing? Right? I mean, I thought Into the Spider Universe was, you know, I haven't seen that one. And I, I don't know that's still in the theaters, but I think that's a pretty big competitor when it comes to comic book stuff right now. Well, that would be like the ones going head to head with them. Like, okay. I'm trying to think if, if there's anything out right now there, or even like a week or two before this weekend uh, that would go head to head with it. I know there was some other movie that was pretty big. Well, How to Train Your Dragon's out, but that's on its third week, I believe. So it usually starts going down uh, by the third week. Um, yeah, I'm trying to scap, uh, uh, scan through this because there's there are some spoilers or potential spoilers. and th- th- So far, it's mostly been positive. I will yeah. say that. Most of these things are positive. Um, we got one person saying how they really want to meet Chris Evans. Um <laughs> And they're really, really into Chris, Chris Evans, apparently. Apparently. Take another take that trolls. <laughs> it's more people attacking the trolls and making conspiracy theories than it is anybody being negative at all. I'm not. Well, I don't know. I've if only that saw one, what? Two? One 
Well, we're, one says movie was whack, lol. So I don't know if that was. And one says it was bananas, but that it does that doesn't tell me anything. I like whack. Could go either way. And I like bananas. Yeah, it could go either way. Yeah, you got to say something more than it was terrible. You have to say I didn't like X Y Z, or else it doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was expecting way more. Warrior you didn't get Avengers. the right hate one. No, nope. uh, judging people by their race and sex is wrong. I wish you privileged white men would get that. <laughs> you know, and that's exactly where they, where the quote unquote haters came from. From comments like that, you shouldn't mix it together. You and know, I think this was going to get a lot of hate anyways because there's still so many people. What it seems like there's so many people not wanting a female hero for whatever. See, I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know, but that's a I, lot. Of, I, I don't. I've it? never heard that. I've never heard it. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe because I don't hang out with. Uh, I don't just because I haven't heard it in any of my circles, right? Including a bunch of comic geeks. Even right. when I was reading comics, we used to talk about who would make a good comic book. Uh, a movie used to be uh, almost a weekly topic when we would have group talk in the comic book store I worked at at the time. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever said like horrible things about uh, the women in comics, other than you know, other than yeah, Miss Marvel would have to be more popular to really hit it, you know, to right. really get it on there. Um, and people complain that uh, Wonder Woman never really got a good, uh, or su- and even uh, Superwoman. Right, uh, Supergirl. They never really got a fair shake either. Yeah, well, and I think a lot of it too is um because I I've, I've I listen to a radio station here in Orlando and um I only got to hear bits and parts, so I can't you know say this is exactly what he said. But what I took from his view of it was, um, he thought they were beating people over the head with the woman empowerment movement, like it was almost like a big publicity ad for that. And I watched the movie and I like, it does talk about it, but not like a beat over your head with it. It's, it, it comes in in the right places and it okay. shows that women can be strong and do a really great job. And I, 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 ne- I did not understand where his thoughts were coming from on that one. Right. That from what I understand, it's more from comments outside the movie than it is from inside the movie. It was, it was, it was an actress overstepping, um, and trying to make her own political, uh, things, which have nothing to do with the movie, which, uh, I hope, uh, they don't do that no more. Cause that, <laughs> if anything's been hurting Marvel movies, it's been that. Right. Um, but we'll take a step way from superheroes into another disney property uh, dumbo i this looks... <laughs> go ahead you first <laughs> i did look at the comments of this about a week ago Uh-oh. um so i don't know what well maybe now we can go a few days ago so i don't know what now has been added but i think this <laughs> is interesting live action dumbo uh directed by tim burton um yeah, that's got to be interesting. Whoa, I didn't mean, I didn't oh, mean no. to do that. That will be an edit. All right, yeah, I saw the preview yesterday with seeing Captain Marvel. It looks really good. I don't know if I'm ready to see Dumbo again, though, because it, it's um it's one of those rough movies. Like, I, I'm still suffering from the first time I saw Dumbo <laughs> with the big pink background. Because remember, Dumbo was made during a strike. During a during an artist strike, because mm-hmm. you watch uh, Pinocchio that mm-hmm. came out right before Dumbo, you got these beautiful, just absolutely amazing uh, animations, and then background layering backgrounds, and you got Dumbo, which not so much. And they even put strike jokes inside the movie to make fun of the people that were on strike. Oh, geez, that's crazy! I'll have to rewatch the old one just to catch that. Yeah. Um, let's see here. What do we have here? Oh my goodness gracious. Guess where Parker and Griffin are going Saturday they're going uh Saturday the third. I don't know who any of those people are. I don't care where they're going. <laughs> they're probably going somewhere to get away from you because you're calling them out on the public site. <laughs> Uh, Don't ever call me out on a public site. Like, I know where you're going to be on this day. 
You know me. No, no, no you do, are not allowed to stalk me like that. <laughs> oh, there's somebody mentioning the pink elephants. Uh, oh, go ahead and read it. Uh, those pink elephants traumatized me as a child. <laughs> I wonder if they're in this movie because the pink elephants were supposed to uh, uh, show that Dumbo was drunk, I believe. Yes. It was just a big LSD acid scene, if I remember correctly. It was just a horrible scene. Oh my God. Dumbo was not as good. Dumbo was never that good. I just remember having to watch it over and over again. Yeah, I never um, never got into Dumbo. I, I watched it, but it's not like one of my yeah. top favorite ones. Uh Tim Burton should remake Hundred One Dalmatians and use the guys from Pirates of the Caribbean uh that take out his eyeballs as the ones who steal the puppies. <laughs> <laughs> they, they make a great chapter and horrors Helena Bo- okay well I, I, I'm not sure it has to do with Dumbo but okay <laughs> they made a lot of action 101 Dalmatians by the way yeah I don't think they need to do that again they actually made uh, they don't need and do, a sequel they don't need to do any of these again <laughs> uh, well, I, I've liked it like when they did um, uh, Maleficent I like that version because you're telling the same story again, but from a different point of view. So that one I was always cool with. But right. It's not like remakes. these other ones, like Beauty and the Beast, which um, the best scenes are the shot by shot remakes and the worst scenes are anything that they did original. Yeah. I could be wrong. You know, hate me. Well, uh, you tell me in the it. comments, email, you know, any way you want to get a hold of me. We do have a media dealer sandwich group page too on Facebook. Uh, and then you got, um, uh, they're making a Lion King and it's all, you know, uh, live action, but Lion King. But it's CGI. CGI. <laughs> what, what's the point? Uh, I'll let you go ahead and read this one I just highlighted. All right. This one says, no, Disney hasn't had an original idea in years. These live remakes are just a cash grab. And let's see if we have any good replies <laughs> to that. Um, I agree. I've never said, gee, I really wish they would make a live action version of my favorite childhood movies. <laughs> Broadway's the only place I'd want to see that. Well, the guy has more of a want than I do. Yeah. Uh, someone tell them to stop crying. <laughs> um, and calling them crybabies because they voice their opinion. That's why I like reading comments. Uh, someone tell them to take my money. I know I saw one comment saying, oh, Johnny Depp's not in this one. <laughs> <laughs> I always love that meme where it's um, uh, Tim Burton. And he's like, you're telling me there's other actresses or actors and actresses other than my wife and uh, Johnny Depp? Why oh, Johnny Depp. That's, yeah. And Johnny Depp's just looking like all scared. I love yeah. that. Thanks <laughs> every time. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I can find at least one more good one. I do have to say this Dumbo looks better than uh, Aladdin so far. Yes, uh, that um, that Will Smith uh, <laughs> as a I I was ex- they could do so much cool stuff. I was totally expecting Will Smith, you know I was totally expecting him to be over the top CGI with just like kind of Will Smith like face, right. And no, it looks like <laughs> he looks like he just spilled blue paint all over himself. <laughs> it's like, why do the Smurfs look better than this? Why do right, right. why did the guy in Arrested Development <laughs> in blue paint look better than this? Oh yeah. Oh now, yeah, you're getting into scary territory right now. Um, oh, this is a, okay. So I clicked on Aladdin, and I'm just going to read one or two of these comments. You know what? I think you might have more read them than I than I do. You can go ahead and uh, uh, try to read this oh, in geez, best uh, <laughs> Will Smith Fresh Prince uh, type way. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that one, but I could definitely at least read it. Uh, in S in West Agrabah, trapped and raised in the magic lamp where I spent most of my days. All right, let me try. Let me try. Let me try. <laughs> in West, it says 
Abra, it's an Agrabah, I thought. Okay, and once Agrabah trapped and raised, this is a magic lamp where I spent most of my days chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all blue, and all snoozing in this cave full of treasure and jewels. When this guy and his monkey, they were up no good, started stealing bread and the money in their neighborhood. <laughs> oh, God, I'm really hoping that the replies went along with this. Nope. Uh, you may have to go, nah, you gotta go up to oblivion. Yeah, I, I was hoping it would be one of those where someone just like kept writing lines to it. <laughs> those are the best. A few people telling him how to spell Agrabah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he did not say. Uh, I will yeah. agree with uh, uh, this person. Jafar is supposed to be intimidating. This guy is, sounds like he, it, he has had- not hit puberty yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Jafar's a very, and I even knew them going into this role. Jafar's a very hard role to fit. So it's yeah, Jafar sucks. How can you fail on one of the most iconic villains ever? His voice throws me off completely. They didn't even bother giving him eye eye shadow for crying out loud. <laughs> oh man! When I believe the voice actor from the cartoon. Uh, did the stuff for the Broadway version because his yes. voice is so iconic. Yeah, the guy that did for the cartoon did uh, the sequel, uh, did uh, Aladdin 2, and he did most of the video games. Uh, Robin Williams only did uh, one, three, and some of the educational games. And he did like a Disney uh, Presents type thing too. Um, right. He was really bitter over the way they treated him. on the Not the way they treated him, but on Aladdin. I read some behind the scenes thing. Like he wanted them not to promote him as much uh, on the first movie. Yep. And, and then he wasn't even supposed to be on like the front cover, I believe. And then they right. ended up putting him on there. Yeah, the contract said promote him about 25% since he's only like 25% of the movie. So they put him 25% of the cover. (laughs) Everyone else is little tiny and he's 25% of the cover. Oh, man. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, He was trying to advertise for his uh, passion project movie, Toys, which was pretty good, I think. Mm. No one's ever, no one else seen it, but I thought it was pretty good. If somebody commented they would rather see The Rock as the genie than uh, Will Smith. I don't even know if that one would work. No, I just oh the genie. I felt like if they're going to do anything with genie, it has to be over the top because that's what made genie so great. It was just this big, huge, over the top thing. He needed to be like all CGI, right? Yeah. Well, you need somebody just going for actor standpoint. You need somebody that does a bunch of voices. That's what the genie is, is he's right. you know, all cosmic, all knowing. So he pulls out stuff from different eras and things. You know, I I follow uh, Gabriel Iglesias, the comedian, and he was trying to be uh, the genie at one point. I would have been down for him because he can do at least a few more voices than I think Will Smith could do. The, who's the voice actor guy from um, The Simpsons? That oh. does over half the voices. Right, right. I can't think of his name, but that would have been better too. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I, you never, you never know. You don't know Will Smith for his uh, voices. You know him for, I'm not sure what, but <laughs> being, the, being the guy uh, constantly going outer space for, for fighting aliens. <laughs> Inviting my mechanical spiders in other movies as a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just oh man, I just expected everything in land like everything in the trailer was like like subtle. It should have been over mm-hmm. the top. Yeah. Um way over the top. Genie needed to be extremely over the top. It was like one of the few times where I go, I want something just just over the top, crazy. Mm-hmm. It's the only way you're going to compete with the original, and you're never going to beat the original. So why even do it? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe someone. I don't know. Well, they're trying. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's. I don't the, know. The you look back at the original and the uh, and you look at it in today's modern perspective, and you're wondering why they're redoing it because <laughs> isn't an Agrabah supposed to be Iraq, uh, Baghdad, uh, something like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they had a little 
bits of Sharia law in there too by cutting off, uh, trying to cut off people's hands that were stealing. Right. Maybe we should have. Um, <laughs> I did see Aladdin in Arabic before, though. Oh, that's interesting. I, I did see, uh, um, I think it was my second deployment to Iraq. Uh, I was doing some kind of phone. I was doing some kind of uh, phone watch thing and they had a cable TV. So I started flipping around the channels. Uh, they had like three or four English channels and there was a Arabic channel that had a lad and I started watching it in Arabic. Somehow it seemed appropriate. Yeah. If you watch it enough, you know it. So you, you kind of got an idea what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. What? What's the game you guys play? Uh, sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, though, that's going to... Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, if anyone wants to play <laughs> Sea of Thieves with me, uh, my gamer tag is Toden0. Uh, and there if you, you want to find me online, it's Toden.com, MediaLearSandwich.com. Uh, you know, uh, you can find it on Spotify, uh, DV Radio now, dvradio.net. You could uh, probably find me, Lear Sandwich, there Tuesday nights, 1900, Eastern Standard Time. See, military, see, veteran. I could I could do that. Uh, that's 7 <laughs> o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and YouTube, youtube.com uh, slash Toad and K, where you can catch the video of this. You also catch the video on the websites, but it's all from YouTube. Uh, so please comment, rate, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications because subscribing really doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, <laughs> I was just yeah. having to explain that on my Artist Weekly update uh, this past Thursday because uh, a couple of people were like, "Oh, nobody, n- nothing popped up that you were live." I'm like, "You got to hit the bell, hit the bell." Yeah, please feel free. Go ahead and uh, um, shut yourself out again. Yeah, so I am uh, Josh Bauer of J Bauer Art. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Just type in J Bauer Art on any of those social media pages and you'll be able to find me. Uh, and then I also have a website, uh, jbauerart.com and jbauerartshop.com. Uh, you can buy all my paintings, prints, uh, mini canvases, all that good stuff on the online shop. If you can't find something you're looking for, just shoot me a message on any social media and I will get you squared away. Awesome. Uh, Hey, everyone, thanks for watching. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed our discussion and may the algorithms be in your favor.